kind of personalization helps them retain the language and, and uh, make the language theirs. Um, I will say that again, it's very important to monitor carefully and uh, in feedback to ask the students why uh, the answers are what they are so that stronger students can show off and weaker students can hear the explanation. Um, um, a couple more ideas for speaking or writing tasks, just some sl slides jumbled up, um, which you can probably um, have a look when um, you get my slides later. <clears throat> and one final thing um, I'd like to comment on, and this is what I said um, earlier, we don't know what will happen in September, um, and uh, we don't know whether we will be working online or offline. Um, when I start uh, working with a student I, um, or with a group, I take some time for initial tech training. So if we're using Zoom, I um, do actual drilling. I tell my students, uh, click on the green tick, click on the red cross, uh, send me yes into the chat. And I do it until they can do it fast enough for us to start learning. Because if they haven't coped with the tech side, um, they will be spending a lot of energy on that. So tech training first. Um, the other thing is letting the students choose whether they want to make notes on computer or on paper, because sometimes um, for them, it's more convenient to do it on paper. Um, I like instructing them to do it on the computer so that I can monitor. And this can be solved with this initial training. Um, I always send answer keys um, to the students. Um, whether they are strong, weak, whether the task is easy or difficult, they always have a record so that they can come back to the task later. And also, um, a very simple and a very obvious thing is having a task for fast finishers. Um, I have just about um, three minutes and I think that's some time for our questions. Um, you can see my email on the slide. That's in case you want to contact me uh, for anything. Um, again, please be patient. Macmillan will send you my slides. Uh, you don't have to email me for them. You will all get them. Um, and I can probably um, spend some time on the questions which I see um, in the chat. I'll just go up um, a little bit. Um, um, let me see, let me see. How do you drill pronunciation online? Okay, that's a very good question. When I drill pronunciation online, I first model it. Then I ask the students to uh, say that quietly to themselves a couple of times so that they practice. Then I ask them to drill open class. That's messy. Don't worry about it. That's always messy. And then I do quite a lot of individual drilling. I nominate them and I ask the students to say the things. Um, so that's Kate, that's can you hear me? Yes, yes, of course. You can hear me. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you um, for um, having me here and giving me the time. Um, do we still have the time Pleasure. for questions? I don't think, I don't think we have um, a lot of time for the questions, do we? We don't have a lot of time, unfortunately, Kate. No, no it's, it's, okay. it's our fault. It was a, there was a slightly late start, but um, yeah. Yeah. can I ask you uh, a couple? We, we had a few during the webinar. Is that all right? Uh-huh. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we've got one, Quite. Uh, it's probably quite difficult for you to answer this, but it's from Roberta. Um, she's asked, should we try allowing to change places during disin using disinfection to get closer with masks, using individual microphones? Mm. Uh, is, is it worth it, do you think? Should we be going to those extents? Um, I think it's very important to give the students a chance to work with uh, different people. So, yes, it's important to uh, regroup them while still following the rules and regulations and the advice. Uh, regarding COVID-19. So keep the distance, uh, but um, yes, do um, regroup the students. Okay. Um, so Mohammed has also asked, um, don't you think that grouping students according to their levels has a negative impact on the learning process? 
Um, that's a very good question. Um, and in terms of the level, if we say B1, it's very important to group the students so that you know they can follow us and progress at the same pace. If our class is um, if the level of the students is too similar or the same, they know the same things and don't know the same things, they cannot learn from each other, unfortunately. So right. some difference is uh, great and it should be there and we should use it so that stronger students teach weaker students um, and weaker students uh, motivate the stronger ones. Yes, lovely. Well, thank you very, very much, Kate. We've had one more question. We've got yeah. time for one more. Yeah. Uh, so mixing the student is good, but it might have a ne negative impact on the good student. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, if a stronger student is constantly working with a weaker student, they will get demotivated quite quickly, yeah. which is why I am very careful about that. And I, I mix students quite rarely. Um, and um, even if I do that, I try and give like a more difficult task to a stronger student. Okay, mm -hmm. brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Kate. I think I speak on behalf of everyone else. There's lots of thank yous going on here. Um, a lot more thank yous than, than questions. So I think we're gonna yeah. wrap it up there, if that's all right with you. Um, I'd just like to say thank you, Will. Thank you for having me here. And thank you, Macmillan. Uh, for letting me do um, this webinar and thanks to Federica who also helped me um, in preparation uh, and thanks everyone um, for staying here with me and thank you everyone for listening to me. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll reiterate that as well. So thank you very much to uh, Federica. You can't see Federica. She's hidden behind the the veil of the of the webinar uh, but she holds this whole thing up so thank you so much federica for doing everything you did to organize this session um and thank you to all of you teachers who have come along to to listen to kate's advice um it's been great you've been really really attentive and really engaged with the with the session so thank you so much for coming um, so just so you know, I've already seen a couple of times this has come up. Uh, so to let you know about the certificate, within the next 14 working days, you're going to get an email from Macmillan English, MacmillanEducation.com uh, with your certificate. Uh, that will be accompanied by Kate's slides, which she uh, very kindly will be sharing with you as well. Uh, so please just be patient. As it says there, please be patient. Don't forget to check your spam folder and it would help maybe if you add help at macmillaneducation.com to your address book and then hopefully that will find its way into your inbox and you won't miss it um, so that's your uh, certificates so i just wanted to take this time to tell you more about the back to school program that we've got running uh, right now so the all-inclusive back to school site uh, launched yesterday um, which has got all sorts of resources and training to help you return to school smoothly um, and help you with the teaching, help the students with their learning this new school term. Um, and we have tried to adapt uh, to whatever situation you might be uh, going into. You may not know yet um, what situation you're going into, but we, uh, we want to give you the help that we can depending on your situation so please do have a look at that macmillanenglish.com slash back dash to dash school we split it up into four key areas based on the research that our market intelligence team have done they interviewed thousands and thousands of teachers um, and we have looked at assessment uh, bridging the gap learner independence and social and emotional support um, based on the feedback that we had from from you the teachers uh, so please do go to that site to find out more uh, and to get all those resources that you're going to need when you go back to school good luck with it if we don't speak to you before then good luck with going back to school i hope you enjoy being back in the classroom again online or offline so as i said as part of those four key pillars two of them are assessment and bridging the knowledge gap uh, so this will probably be quite high on your agenda when you first go back. You want to find out where your students are at in terms of the knowledge, their skills, what they remember from last term, what work they did perhaps at home if they were being homeschooled as well. Um, 
So just so 